After understanding the ISO cost functions, now we are in a position to find out the producer's equilibrium by incorporating the concept of ISO quants in this diagram. So let us see how we can do this. The purpose is to minimize the cost and to find that technology. And by technology we mean those uh, combinations of labor and capital that we can use here. So we have a number of uh, ISO cost functions and they are plotted here out of which three are visible. This is the first one, second one, third one. These are the various ISO cost functions. And then we have single target of output. This is what we want to produce. This is the I ISO quant that we want to achieve a certain level of output. And uh, we want to choose the minimum possible ISO cost line so that we are able to minimize the cost. Here, this is the point of equilibrium because the tangency happens here. We are able to achieve this level of output by using the second ISO cost curve. If we use the third ISO cost curve, it will be here and here, which is not desirable because we are using this much of the additional cost that is from 2 to 3. And we are able to produce the same output by using the ISO cost curve 2. So it's better to be uh, settled here we will be using this much of the V2 and this much of the V1. So this is how diagrammatically we understand it and mathematically uh, we can also do it simply by understanding this feature that the slopes they are equal at point B. The slope of the isoquant and the slope of the cost line and that is the iso cost line they are equal because this is actually a kind of tangent to the isoquant so the tangent shows the slope of the curve at a certain point that is point B. So we try to find out this slope and for that we take the function and the function of the isoquant is this where the output is fixed at this level so you can see above Q we have a bar that shows that this is isoquant that the quantity produced remains the same. V1 and V2 they are there and these are the inputs. Now we take the total differential of this function and when we do on the left hand side since this is a fixed value that is Q bar its differential will be equal to 0. So in the next step we have written 0. Now on the other side we have to take the derivative, the partial derivative of the dependent variable Q with respect to the independent variable V1 and we multiply this derivative with the differential of the first independent variable V1. Now we repeat the same process for the second variable that is V2 and when we do we get this expression. Now we can uh, write this term as mp1 because this is the derivative of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable v1 so it can be the marginal product of v1 this can be termed as the marginal product of v2 so we write it mp2 so mp1 and mp2 are better economic notations that we can use here dv1 remains the same dv2 remains the same and then we shift this mp1 dv1 term here on the left hand side and the right hand side remains the same. Uh, now we dv1 and dv2 they are gathered here by cross multiplication and this is the final answer that is the negative of the ratios of the marginal products. So this is the slope of the isoquant that we can equate to the slope of the budget line in order to find out the equilibrium. And we know that the slope of budget line is simply the ratio of the two prices with a negative sign. That is, it's a negatively sloped curve. As you can see, it's a negatively sloped curve. Now we equate these two values. Here we can see these two terms are representing the isocost, uh, the isoquant slope, and this final term is representing the isocost curve slope. So uh, this is happening at the point of tangency B we keep this term and that term instead of this term because these are more economically meaningful these are the ratios of the marginal products and these are the ratios of the prices now we can rearrange them and we can cancel out this negative sign on both sides rearranging them in a way where we can say that we have taken the ratio of the marginal product and the price of one of the inputs and then the other of the input that is mp1 over p1 
So if the ratios of the marginal products and the prices of all the factors of production are equal, it is the condition for the output maximization. So after doing this, we can also try to achieve another small thing and that thing is to see the effect of the price change on the equilibrium. Here we are assuming that the price of the second input, it increases because increase in the factor prices is nothing exceptional. It can happen as all of the prices they change in the real life. Now the V2, if uh, its price has increased, the demand for the other factor of production should increase because relatively it becomes cheaper for us. So the demand for V1 should increase and this is why we can see that th this was the first point of equilibrium. This was the first level of uh, input of V1 but now it has increased to this because this was the initial level of consumption of our input of V1 and now we are using less of it because it has got expensive as its price has increased and this shift is happening here and this shift is now further leading to the increase in the con uh, input of V1. This was the initial intercept for V2 now this is the new intercept for V2. This was the initial intercept for V1 and now this is the initial intercept for V, uh, the second or the new intercept for V1. Joining this with this, that is the new intercepts, we get the new co iso cost line which is tangent to the iso quant at point B. So this becomes the new equilibrium instead of point A. So this was the this this is the description of the slope that it was before. Now it has increased because the numerator that is P2 has increased. Now you can do a little bit of experimentation by increasing the prices in a different way. For example, you can increase the price of the first input that is P1. You can increase the price of both of the inputs. You can decrease the prices of both of the inputs. You can increase the first factor price and you can uh, decrease the first input price and you can increase the second input price and you can do vice versa that is increasing the price of the first input and decreasing the price of the second input. So this experimentation can be done on th uh, this uh, equilibrium and you can do this yourself. This is a DIY for you that should give you some rehearsal. This is how we do the analysis of the output maximization problem by using the diagram and by establishing the equality of their slopes and by using the equations of isoquants and isocost functions. Thank you.